In this tutorial, we will go over how to play the role of the LRM carrier, starting with some theory about the playstyle, how to choose a mech, build it in the mech lab, and end off with some example gameplay. LRM carriers use long-range missiles to attack their opponents from afar, raining down damage from relative safety. They require target locks in order to have their missiles track the enemy. You can get these locks by targeting an enemy and aiming at them until the reticule turns red. Your allies can also provide you with targeting information, allowing you to fire indirectly from the safety of solid cover. LRMs are a force multiplier. They can greatly improve the combat potential of frontline forces. You are able to shoot over and past your allies, meaning that you can deal damage even when all the firing lanes on the enemy have already been occupied by allies. However, you may think that since your LRMs have a max range of 1,000 meters, you can be effective even out at those extreme ranges. While well, actually, LRMs are best suited for mid-range fire support. This is because of missile travel time. Whenever you launch your missiles, your enemy will receive an incoming missile warning, prompting them to seek cover. If you are far away from your enemy, the missiles will take longer to reach them, giving your enemy a longer duration in which to seek cover and avoid your missiles. By moving forward with the team and taking a position 300 to 500 meters away, your missiles will take much less time to reach their target. This will result in less reaction time for enemy mechs to reach cover and more of your missiles connecting. Careful not to close too much, however, as LRMs have a minimum range of 180 meters. If an enemy is within that range, your missiles will do greatly reduced or no damage to them. As the front lines move, reposition constantly to keep it at least 300 meters away. Because of the need to maintain a consistent range with your opponents, it is important to choose a mech that has decent mobility, while also having enough weight to carry an LRM payload. Because of this, I would recommend a medium or heavy chassis. You can do this build on an assault mech, however it is generally seen as wasteful as assaults are expected to be at the front lines using their armor to soak enemy damage. Also, check for variants with multiple missile hardpoints and missile weapon quirks, specifically missile cooldown in order to fire more often. Some examples are the Hunchback 4J with its LRM-10 cooldown quirks, or the Mad Dog A variant with its 6 missile hardpoints. Let's take a look at an example LRM build on the Hunchback 4J. With your mech fresh from the store, let's strip its components and build it from scratch. First, let's look at your mech upgrades. Double heat sinks for additional cooling and endosteel for some additional tonnage are fairly standard upgrades. You will also want to upgrade Artemis Missile Guidance. This improves the speed at which you can acquire a missile lock, the ability of your missiles to track moving targets, and reduces missile spread, meaning that more of your missiles will hit the enemy's center of mass. If you are going to be using missiles as your primary weapon, it is highly recommended to upgrade Artemis. To ensure you have enough mobility to keep up with the moving battlefield, I would recommend at least 80 km per hour. On this mech, that is at minimum a 250 rated engine. For this design, I have chosen to go with an XL250 that gives me a max speed of 81 km per hour. Next, let's look at your available missile hardpoints and weapon quirks, and see what is the best combination of missile launchers. This mech has two missile hardpoints in the right torso, and strong LRM-10 related quirks. It is best to equip two LRM-10s over ones of different sizes because of these quirks. However, if you are in the situation where you have lots of missile hardpoints, and no specific weapon quirks, such as the Mad Dog A variant, it is best to equip multiple smaller launchers instead of one larger launcher. This is because smaller launchers have a lower cooldown, and therefore higher damage per second. For example, if you equip 6 LRM-5s on the Mad Dog, you have a DPS of 8.6, instead of 6.7 DPS with 2 LRM-15s. If you have the hard points, try to spread your missiles into multiple launchers. Next, let's think about the quantity of ammo you want to carry. As a rule of thumb, I take around 1.5 tons of ammo for every 5 rating in LRM launchers. Since we have 2 LRM 10s on this mech, there are 4 sets of 5 rating, and therefore, you should take around 6 tons of ammo. For mechs that have strong cooldown quirks, you will burn through this ammo faster, so you should take a bit more, while mechs with no quirks will go through the ammo slower, meaning you can take a bit less. As such, because of its cooldown quirks, I would recommend 7 to 8 tons of ammo for this design. Next, you can look at support items that will improve your missiles. These include active probes, tag lasers, and narc missiles. 
Active probes will increase your sensor range by 25%, but more importantly will counter a nearby enemy ECM. If you run into an ECM equipped enemy without an active probe, the ECM will block your ability to acquire missile locks, rendering your main weapon useless. Always run an active probe on your LRM carrier to protect against this. TAG is an energy weapon that will mark your enemy, granting quicker missile locks, greater missile accuracy, longer retention of locks, and counters the effects of enemy ECM. The downside is that you must hold it on the target, meaning you need line of sight and cannot actively torso twist without losing its benefits. NARC is a missile weapon that fires a homing beacon. If it hits an enemy, they are lit up on your ally's sensors for a short duration, even if they break line of sight. Also, like TAG, it grants quicker missile locks, greater missile accuracy, longer retention of locks, and counters the effects of enemy ECM. However, because of its short range and the fact that it takes up a missile slot, it is better suited on a spotting light, working in coordination with your LRM carrier. Next, let's look at backup weapons. You never want to go full LRMs because of their minimum range. If an enemy light mech is able to flank and get close, you will be at his mercy unless you are packing a few short range backup weapons. Most LRM carriers will also take a few energy weapons, such as small or medium lasers. For the Hunchback 4J, we can either go with five small lasers spread across the mech, or three medium lasers in the right torso. Let's go with the medium laser option, and since you have no weapons in the arms, you can strip some of the armor for an additional heatsink or ton of ammo. Lastly, let's look at modules. For consumables, you want UAV and either coolant or a strike. UAV will help you by giving targeting information for enemies that are near it. Since you have the mobility, you can move into the front lines for a short duration to launch your UAV and retreat back to firing your missiles at enemies targeted by the UAV. For the other consumable, Coolshot will help you deal with any emergency heat issues, such as when you are being swarmed by lights and need to keep your backup weapons firing, or an artillery slash airstrike will just augment your damage output. For mech modules, you want Target Decay. This will increase the amount of time that you can retain your locks even after the enemy has left line of sight. This is a very important module, as an extra second or two of lock time could mean the difference between a volley of missiles hitting or missing. Other than that, you can just take any strong module, such as radar deprivation or seismic sensor. For weapon modules, you want to get cooldown for your LRMs, and either range or cooldown for your backup lasers. Cooldown on the LRMs will directly improve your main DPS, it is not worth even unlocking the range boost for LRMs. As explained earlier, firing out at the max range is ineffective. Your LRM carrier is now ready for battle. Let's take a look at some example gameplay using this build. In this skirmish match on Caustic Valley, I am moving with my allies, keeping the frontline mechs between me and the enemy. Seeing as my allies start to take fire, I move up this hill in order to gain line of sight. Friendly LRMs start to light up the enemy executioner, so I move forward to assist, using my tag laser to mark the target and increase our missile accuracy. We make short work of the enemy assault that was caught out in the open. After defeating him, I drop back, waiting for my mech to cool down. Seeing my allies move forward on the left, I push forward as well, trying to maintain my distance behind the front lines. Marking the King Crab, I try to put some missiles into him, but I notice that they are hitting terrain and not connecting. Instead, I switch to the more exposed Storm Crow and quickly finish him off. Moving forward, I re-tag the King Crab, but again my missiles are not connecting, so I stop firing. The enemy Jaeger mech has disconnected in a bad location, and we clean him up quickly. Seeing that my allies are pushing into the caldera, I move to follow, while watching on the right to check for any enemies trying to flank.
Firing on the victor, my first volley connects, but the second hits terrain, so I stop firing immediately. Noticing that we are not getting consistent locks, I move forward to launch my UAV. However, the enemy is closer than I expected, and I am forced to use my backup weapons on the Stormcrow. With my allies' help, we push the Stormcrow away, and I start firing missiles at enemies targeted by my UAV. Using my tag, I cut through the ECM of the Hellbringer, allowing a quick missile lock. Again, seeing my missiles hit terrain, I stop firing and look for a new target. Marking the enemy Mad Dog with Tag breaks him out of ECM cloaking, allowing me to get a lock, but he moves out of line of sight. And finally, finishing off the enemy Mad Dog. Using tag has an additional benefit. When your team kills an enemy that you are actively tagging, you are awarded extra sea bills. And this can amount to a significant payout at the end of a good match. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Good hunting.